Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me uh, just take a few words, because I know we don't have much time today, to, uh, to describe uh, why I'm here and what I did when I was here. Uh, just about a year ago, Secretary Christopher and Vice Premier Chen decided in New York when they met uh, at uh, the United Nations that it would be useful for Vice Foreign Minister Liu and me to meet uh, periodically during the course of the year to discuss not only those uh, issues that were at the forefront uh, of U.S.-China relations, but to go over a whole range of issues of mutual concern. Uh, this is the third such meeting that uh, Vice Minister Liu and I have had. Uh, we met for almost 12 hours over the course of the past two days. Uh, I think I, I stopped counting at 15 the number of subjects that we talked about, again, underlining the fact that uh, there are a broad range of issues that uh, China and the U.S. Uh, have to deal with on a regular basis, some of which are higher on the agenda, others of which are in the context of our uh, joint membership on the U.N. Uh, Security Council as permanent members. Uh, we felt that these talks were extremely useful. Uh, at the end of my visit, I did have the honor and pleasure to uh, meet with uh, the Vice Premier, who had just come back uh, from Europe, and uh, in the context of my conversations both with the Vice Minister and with the Vice Premier, we talked about uh, Vice Premier Chen's upcoming visit to, to the United States, something that uh, we, of course, are looking forward to. Why don't I uh, open the floor to questions? I, I should mention, we'll have a total of about 15 minutes, so. Yes. Um, could you uh, spell out for us the rationale for the change in approach that the administration of the Chinese has issued uh, in response to the most recent U.S. news? Yes, in, in response to your first question, we felt that after 15 years, it, uh, it was time for there to be minor adjustments in the way the United States deal, deals with Taiwan. Uh, we felt that uh, it was appropriate to look at uh, the nature of the unofficial relations uh, with Taiwan and to adjust them in ways that uh, would be conforming to the present state of the unofficial relations. And that was very much the spirit of, uh, of what we did uh, last week. Uh, we explained uh, in the conversations that uh, have taken place both in Washington and in Beijing that uh, the United States, of course, remains fully committed to a one-China policy consistent with the three U.S.-China communiques, that uh, the U.S. Uh, contacts with Ch Taiwan, of course, remain of an unofficial nature. Uh, they will always be the case. Uh, we also noted uh, with satisfaction the uh, improvement in the cro cross-straits dialogue, uh, something that has developed over the past years. And in our conversations with the uh, representatives of the Chinese government, whether it be in Washington or in Beijing, we have emphasized that uh, the one China policy is of paramount importance to the United States and uh, will continue to be so. Record. But uh, let me say that in the context of these many hours of conversation, Taiwan was only one of, uh, again, a, a large diversity of subjects that we dealt with. And uh, we talked uh, uh, as well about uh, the other issues that will be on the Vice Premier's uh, agenda when he uh, comes to the United States for meetings in, uh, in New York and Washington. And uh, I think that we have every reason to believe that uh, this broad agenda of issues will be uh, very well handled when the Vice Premier comes to the United States at the end of the month. Speaking of people who have been arrested and have disappeared, 